I read that article in the Catholic Night, and it was absolutely calamitous and silly. It was an exercise in circumlocution designed to divert the focus away from the actual issue, which is the priesthood of all believers. As we read in Peter's epistle, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The Roman Catholic Church erroneously teaches that Peter was the first pope. Now this in itself, Petrine primacy, has been distorted by the Roman Church for centuries, particularly beginning many centuries after the lifetime of Peter with Pope Gregory I or Gregory the Great, who's the real founder of the papacy incipiently. We see in the New Testament that Peter was the primus inter Paris, the first among equals on the day of Pentecost. But by Acts 15, it was James, not Peter, who presided at the first church council. If Peter was the first pope, the magisterium of the church would not have spoken corporately and collectively. Peter would have issued a papal encyclical and spoke autocratically, but Peter didn't even preside, James did. We also see in the book of Galatians that Peter suffered public rebuke from Paul over his behavior towards non-Jews in the church in Galatia. Finally, as we progress to the New Testament, we see at other times you had a Pauline supremacy and then at the end of the first century, you had a Johannine supremacy. The idea of a uh, primacy of Peter in itself is contrary to the New Testament. But Peter, as the apostle, who the Roman church claims to be the first pope, makes it clear that the clergy is a priesthood of all believers. Every believer is a priest. There is no such thing as a separate priesthood the way there was in the Old Testament in the book of Leviticus. It just doesn't exist. It's a going back under the law. The entire premise is bogus. Now what this rather ridiculous article in the Catholic Knight has attempted to do is to take the issue of the Nicolaitans and what various evangelicals say concerning it and make that the Catholic counter-apologetic against the priesthood of all believers, a separate clergy class. I once on the Catholic channel watched a Roman Catholic priest from a religious order who had been an assistant to the late Cardinal Spellman in New York. Why? I watched him lie, talking to Catholic viewers, misinterpreting and mistranslating the word presbyter as priest. through the New Testament trying to substantiate a separate priesthood apart from the priesthood of all believers by openly mistranslating the Greek word presbyter to mean priest. He actually lied. Now, again, the entire Roman Catholic system is based on this kind of deception. It's based on this lie of a separate priesthood. That's why they use the Latin Vulgate so people would know. But when we revert to the original languages, we see the nonsense. It is true to say, absolutely true to say, that there are only various theories as to who the Nicolaitans were and what they did. We do not know. Some have associated them with someone called Nicolaus. Some say Nicholas was one of the deacons from the book of Acts chapter 6, but no one firmly knows for sure or conclusively who or what they were. We simply know that Jesus hated their deeds, and we know what the Greek term means. It's a compound Greek term. Nico suppression of the laity people. Somehow, a hierarchical class or a clergy class above the people that engaged in heavy shepherding, if you want to draw on the language of Ezekiel 34, a suppression of the people by some kind of a clerical overclass. That's what the word means. Now, whether or not this applies to 
anything specific. Nobody at the present time can say we just do not know for sure. We only know what the word meant and what Jesus thought of it. But let's, and we know that it was opposed by certain churches in the early church. That's not the main issue. That is not the core of the argument of a separate clergy. That is not the core of the argument that the Roman Catholic priesthood alone has the authentic priesthood with powers of transubstantiation and powers to forgive sin. That is not the core of the argument. The core is the priesthood of all believers. And we see that Peter taught the priesthood of all believers. He was not the first pope. And even if he were, which he was not, he did not teach the priesthood of all believers. This idea that it was transmitted from the apostles through holy orders unto a certain class of people, the way the Levites were in the Old Testament, is something completely alien to the New Testament. It's not in there. The real issues surrounding the claims of Rome and its clergy, having powers apart from the priesthood of all believers, is not based on what the book of Revelation says about the Nicolaitans and their deeds that Christ hated. It's based upon what Peter said. Is there a priesthood of all believers or is there a separate priesthood? Not every Christian is a leader, but every Christian is a minister. Every Christian is a priest. Not every Christian is an evangelist, but every Christian is a witness. Every one of them is called to witness and share their faith on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Every one of us is a minister. We don't all have the same ministry, but we're all ministers. We are all the Lord's ministers. We are all the Lord's priests. Do not let the lies of Rome tell you anything different. They have no power to transubstantiate. That is not the scriptural understanding of the Lord's Supper anyway. They do not have any power to forgive sin that is not within the body of Christ at large. When you lead someone to Christ, you can pronounce their sins forgiven by the blood of Jesus. These things were invented, much of it absorbed from the Greco-Roman pagan religions of pontifical imperial worship and, and, and the religious systems that originally came from Babylon and found their way through Pergamum into the Greco-Roman Empire and from there into the pantheon of Rome and there into the pontifical religions of the emperor, which were then transferred to the papacy. Over a period of centuries, but completely alien to the New Testament. The issue are not the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Yes, there was some class of people who oppressed the people, Nicolaiti. Yes, they were resisted in the early church, and yes, Christ despised their deeds. It would certainly fit the description of what certain denominations, including Rome, have done and do. But that's not the core of the argument. To try to shift the argument onto the Nicolaitans and make that a polemic on behalf of the Roman Catholic separate priesthood, apart from the priesthood of all believers, is a diversion. It's circumlocution. It's misdirecting people away from the heart of the real issue the priesthood of all believers. If you are born again, you are a priest. If you are born again, you are a minister. If you are born again, no one has any particular priesthood that you and I don't have. We may not all be leaders, but we all have ministries and we are all priests called to present ourselves as living sacrifices. Do not believe the Catholic night. That thing was absolute distortion, absolute circumlocution, an absolute attempt to divert the focus away from the real issue. The priesthood of all believers is what Peter taught. It's what the New Testament teaches, not a Roman Catholic priesthood that is separate. My name is Jacob Prash. Thank you so much and God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube, 
deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.